Peshawar, Pakistan. Muhammad journeys to this bustling town on the border with Afghanistan, where the CIA is running a covert operation to supply weapons to the Mujahideen. From here, Muhammad enters the war zone. Also aiding the Mujahideen from his base in Peshawar is the 17th son of a construction billionaire from Saudi Arabia, Osama bin Laden. 31-year-old bin Laden is funneling money to the rebels from Arab donors. Joining forces with bin Laden is Ali Muhammad's mentor and now a top leader of the Egyptian Islamic Jihad, Dr. Ayman al-Zawahiri. By the end of 1988, Afghan forces with the CIA's help have driven the Soviets out. The war comes to an end. Autumn 1989. Ali Mohammed finishes his three-year tour at Fort Bragg. Even though his name has been on a watch list, he is sworn in as a U.S. citizen. San Francisco, California, 1990. Yes. Ali Mohammed meets with an FBI agent. It's the next step in his mission. Mohammed offers his services as a translator. During the interview, he tosses out some raw intelligence to prove his worth. As a result of this, the FBI ends up using him not as a translator, but as an informant. One of Mohammed's assignments will be to infiltrate this mosque in Santa Clara, run by a group of radical Palestinians. Just as he did with the CIA in Germany, Mohammed exposes the operation and reveals himself as an FBI plant. But at the time, the FBI does not discover the betrayal. Shower, Pakistan, late 1991. At this city near the Afghan border, Ali Mohammed is carrying out a major assignment for Al-Qaeda, helping Osama bin Laden move to a new base of operations. Bin Laden has enemies everywhere and needs a personal security force. Mohammed's wife back in California believes he is just away on another business trip. Bin Laden has so much faith in Mohammed that he entrusts him with coordinating the dangerous move and protecting him from attack. They cover 1,600 kilometers by car, sometimes putting Bin Laden in disguise. They deliver him to Karachi, Pakistan, where his private jet is waiting. From Karachi, Bin Laden travels to Khartoum in Sudan, where the radical Islamic government has agreed to protect him and about 500 of his followers. This becomes Bin Laden's new headquarters. Host, Afghanistan. September 1992. Ali Mohammed is at an outpost in the mountains near the Pakistani border. It is home to an international university of terrorists sponsored by bin Laden. Hundreds of applicants from more than 50 countries worldwide converge here to attend a boot camp. Mohammed is one of the instructors and he's known as an especially demanding teacher. He drills his students in hand-to-hand -hand combat and explosives. They rehearse for kidnappings and assassinations. They practice surveillance of bombing targets, and they learn to organize a terror cell. Mohammed spends months at a time training Al-Qaeda foot soldiers, both in Afghanistan and in Sudan. Vancouver, British Columbia, June 1993. Four months after the World Trade Center bombing, Ali Mohammed is waiting at the airport to pick up an old colleague. The colleague is a 24-year-old fellow Egyptian named Issam Mazouk, one of the men who helped Mohammed move Osama bin Laden out of Afghanistan two years earlier. But 
Marzouk falls foul of the Canadian customs officials. When he tries to slip through using a fake Saudi passport, they arrest him. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police take Marzouk into custody. They also quickly detain Ali Mohammed and question him for hours. Finally, Mohammed gives the Mounties a phone number and asks them to call it. The person who answers the phone vouches for Mohammed. It's his FBI control agent in San Francisco. Ali Mohammed calls the FBI and uh, the FBI intervenes to some extent. I don't think you have to be um, an agent who has worked you know, terrorism all their life to realize something is terribly af amiss here. With the FBI agent's blessing, the Mounties release Ali Mohammed. When he returns to the US, the FBI takes no action against him. But Mohammed's FBI handler does follow up by conducting an interview with him in San Francisco. Mohammed explains that a man named Osama bin Laden runs an organization called Al-Qaeda. He says bin Laden wants to overthrow the Saudi government. He admits to the agent that he has been to Afghanistan and taught at bin Laden's training camps there. He says the subjects included intelligence and hijacking. The FBI agent notifies his superiors in Washington. To his credit, says, you know, this is a little bit out of my league. So I think I ought to get somebody out here who is a specialist on this. So he contacts FBI headquarters. The FBI puts in a request for someone with the right kind of expertise in the US military to interview Mohammed. The Pentagon decides to send officers from Fort Meade, Maryland, headquarters of the National Security Agency. Out from Fort Meade, comes military officers who are traveling in the black. In other words, they've got false IDs and everything covering up who they are. The intelligence officers debrief Mohammed. An FBI agent would later try to find out what Mohammed had told these top secret officials about bin Laden and his training camps. The Pentagon told him the reports had probably been destroyed. The FBI's San Francisco office has by now established that Ali Mohammed is connected to bin Laden and Al-Qaeda. But the bureau lets him remain free. Mohammed receives a message from his wife. The FBI wants to talk to him immediately. The bureau wants to know why Mohammed's name has appeared on a list of potential defense witnesses for a major terrorism trial about to begin in New York City. The blind sheikh Omar Abdul Rahman and 11 of his followers face charges in the so-called Day of Terror plot to blow up New York bridges and tunnels. Ali Mohammed, still determined to play the part of an FBI informant, decides to honor the bureau's request for an interview. His fellow terrorists in Nairobi give him the money for the flight back to America. He's about to come face to face with the FBI and those he continues to betray. Mohammed's name came up in connection with the Day of Terror trial because one of the defendants is fellow Egyptian terrorist El Said Nasser. Nasser is already serving time on gun and assault charges at Attica State Prison. His defense attorneys traced the military documents found in Nasser's New Jersey house back to Fort Bragg and Ali Mohammed. To fight these new charges in the Day of Terror plot, Nasser's attorney wants Ali Mohammed to be a key witness. I wanted anything that had to do with Ali Mohammed because Ali Mohammed was helping the defendants at the same time as he's in the US Army. The defense wants Mohammed to help make the case to the jury that defendants like Nasser are not guilty because they, like Mohammed, were working on the same side as the US government as far back as the Soviet-Afghan war. 